So um, one of the current exhibitions on at the museum right now is called Inventing Abstraction, and it's about that time period um, when abstraction became a movement. And um, a lot of the content of the exhibition is about the artists and how they were connected to each other and how they learned from each other and played off of each other. And part of that was about physically knowing each other or being in the same place. And so uh, the graphic design team working with uh, some people from Columbia created this visualization chart that is this big diagram that's you know, right at the entrance to the exhibition. And with the website, we wanted to take that and make that into something that was dynamic and interactive. Um, and so uh, working with uh, Second Story out in Portland, uh, we created a, a website in probably record time um, that really sort of brings that, that, those connections to life. Uh, and, and I think it's been a very interesting process to see how that you know, is presented. Um, part of it, too, was that the curator wanted to carry that and have it have a life during the exhibition. So we actually started a Tumblr that she's been um, adding to with a lot of content so that it's not just about creating this sort of site that sits there and is more, even though it's interactive, it's in some ways more static and, and uh, remains constant, but that this Tumblr sort of gives an ongoing life to the exhibition as it's on. Um, so the, the site becomes both an archive, but, but also a dialogue about the content of the exhibition while it's on. Well, I, you know, I think part of it, too, is that when we're leading up to an exhibition, the curator has so much to do, like they're doing the publication, they're doing the installation, and, and there's this little moment of time that we have to do this website. And in this particular case, that moment of time got more and more compressed. And I think we had a lot of really grand ambitions that, that got a little streamlined as, as time went on. And I think that the being able to do the Tumblr and have something that was a bit more social and, and ongoing and um, a little bit more spur of the moment gave the curator a way to sort of play out some of those ideas that she had had before that we hadn't really been able to realize fully into the website. Um, so I think that's, and, and some of the dialogues of, with people about the exhibition, she's been able to capture through, through the Tumblr. And so it's, it's mostly been coming out of um, uh, the curatorial department working with um, somebody from my department um, to really make sure that that sort of gets activated and, and updated. Well, I mean, the interesting thing about the results, and, and it's still in process, so we don't really have the full results yet, but what we've discovered so far is that while the Tumblr gets a lot of sort of viral pickup and, and a lot of discussion about what's happening on the Tumblr, the website actually has far more traffic. Um, so it's, again, you think that, you know, something that in some senses is a more, you know, kind of contained static thing actually has a lot of um, uh, attraction to people. And so it's, I think it's not necessarily about choosing one thing or the other. It's about those two and what the relationship is. So we, you know, having this Tumblr and having the website, I think, is kind of an ideal thing because they can play off of each other and they can appeal to different people for different reasons. We've done, started to do more and more about the process leading up to the exhibition. Um, and so whether that's, you know, Paola Antonelli did a, a blog leading up to Talk to Me where um, she and, and uh, Kate, who was working with her on the exhibition, sort of brought together content that they were looking at for the exhibition and actually put it on the website and said, these are the things we're looking at, these are the things that we've selected. And it, it actually was, a way for them to get um, some ideas from the community about what should be in this exhibition. So it was very transparent um, in, in a way that you don't often get about what's, what's sort of the process in terms of the selection. Um, and, and then things like, um, I was talking about the exhibition home delivery uh, yesterday and you know where, where we had a blog with the, um, it was a, exhibition on prefabricated architecture and we had a blog with the different architects um, of the projects blogging about the project, about the fabrication, about the installation leading up to the, the installation because you could see it in the parking lot next to the museum. And so we really wanted to be kind of transparent about what was happening behind the scenes leading up to that and also the installation itself. And so I think when you have those opportunities, you don't always have those opportunities, but when you have opportunities to reveal the exhibition process or 
um, you know, the, the thinking of the designers or the artists leading up to it, it's a great, um, it's a great opportunity, but it's, again, it's not, it's not for every case, but.